Hey, hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is 2025. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you so much for the support and the likes and the subscription. And now we have the first job in 2025. This phone is, have a pro is having a problem and the problem is that the phone is dead. Alright guys, when you press the power button, it's not switching on. And the person told me he experienced this after he charged it. Alright, so after charging, this came up. This problem came up when he went to the phone to pick up the phone the phone wasn't switching on anymore so this problem is a result it's as a result of uh, charging when I plug into my power bank the light shows in few seconds the light goes off that means there's something wrong to this PCB guys so let's try it again and there you go it's not working all right guys um make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel because you're going to learn a lot of things in this video so it is always a good thing to ask your client what happened before the phone has a problem so it will help you in the long run while troubleshooting don't forget the problem the guy went to charge it somewhere and when he went there to pick it up the phone wasn't switching on so let's have that at the back of our mind because it's going to help us in this video all right so putting our multimeter on diode mode we are going to take some readings on diode mode all right first thing first is to put the red probe on ground and the black probe to take readings first i'm reading the the, the ground the negative terminal of this pcb that's what I'm going to be reading right now. Then I read the positive uh, terminal as well. So let's go. All right, that's shutting to ground as a good reading for the negative and the positive. Also, is showing a good reading as well. So that means the positive line is not shorted to the ground. All right. Okay. Now, what's the next thing to do? I'm going to uh, remove the PCB from the casing so i can take proper readings i just want to know why this phone is not switching on all right guys now the pcb is out from the casing or from the chassis however you're gonna call it so let the troubleshooting continues also don't forget to always remember that the 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 dialer is on uh, diode or continuity mode right there and the red probe is always on, on GND so I'm reading the terminals again all right there is a capacitor in between the the two coils right here and the capacitor is reading short to ground on both sides as you can see both sides is reading short to the ground so this is not a good sign so now let's take a reading from the DC power supply. I'm setting my DC power supply to 3 amps. I'm going to bring it down to 3 amps right there. All right. And I'm going to be using 4 volts. That's the voltage. So that is the voltage. And the amps, I mean the current is 3, three amps. All right. So now let's see. Let's, and I'm using iBoot cable. All right. You can go online and get yours. Right, I'm going to plug in the connector right from the DC power supply onto the PCB and let's check the reading that is reading short all right whenever you see an auto ampere like that that is showing you that the PCB has short in it okay guys don't forget that reading all right so now with this reading that means this board there's something wrong with this board all right so now I'm going to put my alligator probes as well i'm going to put my alligator probes to, to to inject voltage don't forget the amps was three and now the voltage is four i mean that's what i set the amps to and it's still currently there three amps so i want to inject voltage onto the battery uh terminal all right which is the battery terminal and look at that look at that look at that something is eating up that amps that is that is not a good sign eating up amperes all right that's auto ampere and that is that means there's a component 
that is shutting on this PCB that is taking the the the, the amperage. All right. So all these components I'm showing you right here, we are going to troubleshoot still on diode mode, red probe on ground, and the black probe to take readings. All right. We are going to read all the component, the capacitor, and all those stuff right there. You see, this capacitor is short right there. The next one is also short. That, that is two. All right. This one is not short, and this one is short. You see that? That one is shorted to ground. Another one, and we have a lot of components. I mean, a lot of capacitors shorting to ground, guys. How do we know which component is having a problem? This capacitor is shorted to ground. When I took reading the uh, earlier, now this capacitor, the next one is also shorted. This one is also shorted. This one is also shorted. This one is almost seven capacitors or six capacitors are short on this rail. Okay. And from the other side, remember there was a capacitor that was also short. So going to our schematic diagram. All right. Going to our schematic diagram. Um, because the, the VBAT line, I mean the positive line of the VBAT is given uh, i mean the battery terminal is giving a short region from the dc power supply so i'm going to click that positive line it's going to show me all the connections i mean every component that is associated with that uh positive line of that battery terminal uh battery uh, of that vbat okay it's going to show me all all the components that are associated with that so now this is going to help us to determine where the problem really is okay now if you have multiple um multiple shots to ground sometimes it's the ic look at this there is an ic here i think that one probably that is the charging ic or whatever okay and there's another component here that has bgas under it looks like there's a chip right there as you can see all right that chip that chip and also those capacitors that are having short i try to click them this capacitor and this one as well all right when i click it it shows that most of the connection runs into that chip right there right there okay the connection from that uh, battery connector down to these capacitors that were shorting everything is just pointing at this chip all right and ladies and gentlemen this chip i have also used a thermal camera to observe this chip the thermal camera is pointing me that this chip is eating up okay this chip this particular chip is eating up look at that number q2300 all right so now going to my schematic diagram i'm going to search for that ic i mean that component q2300 so now we can see that it's, it is active diode alternate that means this chip is a diode it's an alternate diode okay all right so it's brought to uh, uh two results and i'm clicking the next result and it's giving me the schematic diagram i mean of that of that diode of that diode right there and it shows that its charger is 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 um is controlling charger charging area all right it's controlling the charger of the of this pcb okay so now because it's controlling the charger i have to check the charging the charger information on this bonus schematic diagram as well and let's see where it leads us to now the outer line goes straight to that same to that same chip look at that right from here going to the first chip remember we also got a, uh, an association to the first chip and now this is the leg going into the second chip that means um, when the charger was plugged there was probably high voltage that damage or that causes this short uh, shortage circuit all right this is how i'm protecting other components because i want to take out that uh that diode and see if the shot is going to go 
if the shot is going to go away all right guys don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel thank you so much guys so this is me using the microscope so that it can give me accurate precision on what i am doing and i'm done removing that chip now we are going to take another reading start removing the chip if those shots are still there or they are gone all right you see there are a lot of things pointing at that chip i mean that diode that is shorted okay? okay we are still having a good reading here but still here guys this capacitor in between these coils is still reading short to ground all right now let me take reading on those capacitors um close to that chip let's see if it's going to reach short again and it's reading short again guys come on man start removing the chip that means there's another component there is still short guys so through this blackout i went and do more research i mean when i say more research i try to troubleshoot uh off camera okay and i inserted my tama camera and i noticed there is a capacitor right here i'm going to show you in just a minute in just a sec all right i'm going to show you right now this capacitor right here is shorting on that pcb so i also use my thermal camera to read and i found out that the capacitor was eating up okay but the heat was a minimal heat so i popped it out i forgot to turn on my camera but i popped it out i'm going to show you where i removed it from the capacitor is right here right here where there are two uh, chips on there so the capacitor is right in between right there so i have removed that capacitor that capacitor is is reading short and the thermal camera is also saying that the capacitor is short and this is the capacitor i removed okay guys so uh, after removing this capacitor i took another reading and the short was gone but let me show you you guys let me show you guys after removing the capacitor the short was gone so i'm going to take a reading and you see the short is gone the short is gone there is no more short guys there is no more short there is no more short right there okay so i'm going to read the capacitor that i took away from there to show you that it is really shorted let's go you see that you see that the capacitor is really really bad so imagine this capacitor has been disturbing the old pcb causing it to go dead guys but it's not a very easy stuff for me to to troubleshoot but anyways we got the culprit now let's put the screen and let's see what we are going to have if we are going to have a display guys don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to this channel and voila the phone is switching on guys i was so happy and i'm still so happy for this result because it's really really an hectic day for me though <laughs> but yeah it's working now guys it's working it's working it's working so when you are troubleshooting guys you need a lot of equipment to help you for easy and quick troubleshooting and proper troubleshooting so you would ask me what about the component you removed what about that diode that you removed but first let me show you again where i removed that capacitor from all right right here right here so i've popped out that capacitor all right so now this diode i removed here i'm going to i'm going to put it back all right i want to put it back and take another uh reading if it's gonna be shorted or not and voila i'm done so if you have any question regarding this video please don't hesitate to drop it in the comment section thank you guys so okay, this diode i have installed it back and i want to take another reading if the pcb is going to be shorted or it's not going to have any shots and you can see the shot is gone guys this capacitor has been stressing me the whole day guys and the shot is gone even after reinstalling that diode the shot is gone guys so the phone is working perfectly now thank you so much everyone for watching my videos you guys are amazing i hope you have learned one or two things 
in this video guys we used thermal camera we used um our multimeter we use our borneo schematic diagram to troubleshoot a dead iphone 6s plus and there we go look at that the light is stable now that means the phone is working perfectly guys if you have learned one or two things in this video guys please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and also share to all your technician friends i'm going to see you in my next video guys i'm so excited peace